it was a surprise, a surprise election to say the least. Nobody could have predicted the outcome. Governor Kane, to begin, what happened? Well, he upset everything that I've learned about politics over 40 years. I mean, he, he uh, we, we worry about big money. He got outspent, I understand, 10 to 1. Didn't make any difference. He had the opposition of almost everybody who usually decides elections. The Wall Street, Hollywood, most of the media. That's supposed to make a difference. It didn't make any difference. So he upset everything that I understand <laughs> how politics works. And so we got to rethink it all. I, I mean, he was doing, said things like, you know, the New York Times writes something against me. Well, when I tweet, I hit 20 million people. And I said, well, it doesn't matter what the New York Times says. I mean, that's a whole new way of looking at the world. How do you I, see I it? would say that actually it's going back to a, a long time ago version of politics, which is all politics is local and it's reaching people. He had a passion in the people. People were frustrated and angry and furious at inaction in Congress. They felt left behind. They were scared. For the, they were scared of what their future was going to be like. And he didn't bother, as, as Governor Kane said, he didn't bother with the standard things that you do. He just appealed right to those people. And it was the passion of his voters that came out in hordes. As you look for signs of how the new president will lead, Governor Kane, what will you specifically be looking for in terms of bringing the nation together, but also in terms of priorities and, and what he'll go after. How, what will lead his agenda? He and the campaign proposed a larger infrastructure program than any Republican or any Democrat had proposed before. Right. And if he really comes through with that, that's going to create a lot of jobs. It's going to get a lot of things you and I know need to be done in this state as well as other states mm -hmm. going. If he follows that with tax reform, which I think is something that Republicans and Democrats also agree on, mm -hmm. And his, so his first big programs are things where he can put a coalition together. And if he reaches out, as he seems to be reaching out, then people have got to reach back. Will he lead the country in a different direction, do you think? Well, he's certainly going to try. And that's what he was elected on, on doing that. He's going to find he can't do everything that he thought he could do in the way that he thought he could do it. I mean, there are constraints on the presidency. You, you can't fire the Congress. You've got to learn to get along with them. You do have the Supreme Court, and you need to obey the laws. So it's going to take him a little longer. I'm not sure how, how much he'd actually considered what those limitations are going to, were going to be when he was running. But now he's, he's facing them. He's already indicated through some of his interviews that he's stepping things back a little bit, taking another look, looking for ways to do the deal. And that's probably his strongest point in coming into office is doing a deal, because that does mean reaching out to both sides. That does mean bringing disparate, disparate groups together. And so that's, that's a good sign. That's a hopeful sign. Yeah. What are you hearing from some of the people that you've been talking to, Republicans and the like, about the Trump victory? It'd be interesting to hear that. It depends who you talk to. The Republican Party is as divided as anybody else. So it depends yeah. who you talk to. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you talk to some Republicans, they're overjoyed. I mean, look at this. We're finally going to get this, uh, stopping this liberal Supreme Court. I mean, that's, that's uh, joy among, down in Republican land that we are going to do that. On the other hand, you talk to some people who had worries on foreign policy, uh, people who are environmentalists who understand that global warming is real and worry what he's going to do about it. Uh, great worry in some of the issues that he's taking the country in a direction that they worry about. And that divides the Republican Party, so it divides the country. Well, I, like many Republicans, with, particularly women with whom I've spoken, are very concerned about the Supreme Court, concerned for women's rights in particular, and concerned for environmental uh, issues as well, because there are a number that are already teed up to be considered by the court. How important is the orderly transition of power to American democracy? Well, it's always been extraordinarily important because it's what, it's our homework. <laughs> this is what Americans is all about as opposed to a lot of other places in the world which can't seem to transfer peacefully from one regime to another. We've always done it peacefully and we're doing it peacefully now. There are kids out on the street at night and that's their privilege. I, I, I sort of look at them and wonder how many of them voted. But yeah, right. It's the same thing. But, I had exactly yeah. the same reaction. Okay. <laughs> but the, but how I many mean, of you uh, actually voted? They're out there. But eventually, my feeling is, you know, we've got to give this president a chance. 
We've yeah. got to hope he does well because he's our president. That's right. And if he does well, we do well. So uh, I'm as unhappy as anybody in the turnout and the actual ending of the campaign. I was not, as you know, a Trump supporter, but, you know, he's going to be my president. So I have to, I want to give him a chance. I want him to succeed. Governor Whitman and Governor Kane, thank you very much for sharing your perspective on this historic election. Pleasure. Thank you.